We're building a concrete basement, buried underground on all sides. First pour is in. Let me show you what it took us to get to this point. All right, this is how all basement builds start. We're digging out the full footprint for a concrete basement. It's all going underground, but at just two and a half meters deep, a backhoe loader was all we needed to get the job done. It looks simple, right? Just a bit of digging, but this was all clay. And if you've ever worked in clay, you know, it doesn't like to let go. Sticky heavy and grabs the bucket like it owes it money. Every scoop takes muscle, even for the machine. But this backhoe makes it look easy. And we didn't just dig to the wall line, we left about a meter of extra space all around. Makes life easier later when you're tying rebar and setting up formwork. Here's how it looked halfway through. Still rough, not leveled yet, but the footprint's already taking shape. Back arm's squeaking a bit too. Guess even the machine knows this one's serious. And the clay? Piling up quick. You dig a little and suddenly you've got a mountain beside you. Good thing we picked this backhoe for the job. It's not the biggest machine out there, but it does exactly what we need. Digs deep with the back arm, clean, controlled, and then shifts all that heavy clay with the front bucket, no problem. One machine doing two jobs means less hassle, less running around, and no waiting on extra gear to show up. That's why we went with it. Simple setup, but it gets the job done. All right, clay's out, bulk of the digging's done. Now it's about precision. We dropped the excavator into the hole to fine tune the bottom. This is for the basement floor, so it's gotta be spot on. To help us level the floor properly, I used a laser level. Walked around with the catcher, checking that everything was at the right depth. Yeah, it's a bit of a boring step, but it's important. The more you check with the laser now, the less work you'll be doing later with a shovel. With the machine out, I went back in to double check the levels. It's the last chance to spot any uneven areas before we move on. And yeah, a few spots still needed adjusting. So we brought the excavator over the edge and scraped out the last bits of loose clay from the top, just tightening everything up before the next step. Digging's done. Two and a half meters deep, full basement footprint. And that clay pile? It's going right back over the top once the walls are in. Time to set up the axes. We started by hammering in wooden pegs, four at each corner, spaced about half a meter outside the actual building lines. That way we can screw on the guide boards without them getting in the way when it's time to drill the piles. All the pegs are in, four at each corner, locked in tight. Now it's all about precision. We're using the optical level to mark the exact same height across every peg. These height marks on the axes aren't just for show. There are reference points for everything that comes next. Need to know how deep the piles go? You measure from here. How high the rebar mesh sits later? Still from here. Once these lines are set, we can double check every level across the entire basement from start to finish. Now we're lining the boards up with the marked height from the optical level, but only on every second peg. So we fix one end of the board to the mark, then adjust the other side using a spirit level to keep everything straight. That way, even without a mark on every peg, the whole system stays level and locked in. Now we're pulling the strings into place. This is the last bit of setting out the axes. We use the metal rods below as orientation. When the string lines up visually right above them, we know the direction's correct. Then we hammer small nails into the guide boards and hook the string on with a loop. That locks the position exactly where it needs to stay. All the strings are hooked on and pulled tight. Each axis is marked, tensioned, and lined up exactly where it needs to be. Now comes the final check, the diagonals. This is where we find out if everything's square. We measure from corner to corner both ways. If both diagonals match, we know the layout is spot on. Once that's confirmed, we can fully lock it in and move on to marking out the pile positions. Using a plumb bob to mark pile centers, foundation's 25 centimeters thick, so we shift 12.5 centimeters in from the axis. Drop the line, mark the spot, drive the rod. That's our drill point. Let's get to it. Time to start drilling piles. These piles don't go deep, just around 80 centimeters. That's enough, since the whole basement's already way below ground level. They're not structural supports. Just here to lock the mesh and keep things steady during the pour. We're drilling straight into sand with the short auger. No extension needed. The clay's already gone and underneath it's all clean. Soft, easy, and smooth to drill. No fuss. Just spin down and move to the next. And just like that, 14 piles drilled and done. Meanwhile, the backhoe loader's back in action, doing the final touch-ups around the site, leveling out the edge and clearing the way forward. It's prepping the path so we can move in clean and start pouring concrete into the piles without any holdups. And just on time, the lorry with sharp sand rolls in, right when we need it. Sharp sand's the good stuff. Gritty, angular, and perfect for mixing strong concrete. Let's go mix some concrete. 
No need for a concrete truck on this one. We've only got 14 piles and they're not deep. So we're mixing it ourselves, using this old beast of a site mixer. It's been spinning concrete for four years straight, and somehow it's still going. How long do your mixers usually last? Drop it in the comments. Sharp sand, cement, water, simple mix. Tip it into the track dumper and off we go. The track dumper drives in smoothly, right through the freshly made path, no slipping, no sinking. Just clean access straight to the pile holes. Exactly how it should be. Those rubber tracks grip well on the slope, making this kind of job a whole lot easier. Now we're filling the piles halfway with concrete. Makes it easier to drop in the rebar cages without fighting full depth. Quick pours one by one, just enough to seat the cages. The cages go all the way in and get fully covered right to the top. They help stop piles from cracking under load or shifting ground. Hidden, but doing the real work where it matters most. Last bit of installing these piles, dropping in the long rebar rods. They'll hold the mesh that ties the whole foundation together, just making sure they stay at least three centimeters clear of the string line so everything stays aligned. That string marks the edge of the foundation, and rebar needs to stay inside so it gets proper concrete cover and doesn't end up too close to the edge. Concrete in, rebar set, and everything aligned. We'll let it rest for a few days to cure properly. But before we start installing the mesh, we need to level between the piles. The tops of the piles mark the very bottom of our concrete wall, so every one of them has to match height exactly. We'll need a flat, even surface here. Makes it a lot easier to install the formwork later on. Everything's leveled, so now we're welding 25 centimeter spacers onto the rebar rods we installed in the piles. Using a spirit level, we line each spacer with the axis strings to get perfect alignment. Once they're all in, we won't need the strings anymore. The spacers will show us exactly where the concrete wall edges will be. That also makes it easier to see where the mesh needs to go, so we can make sure the rebar stays at least 3 centimeters away from the wall edge. And once the spacers are in place, we can finally start building the rebar mesh. Now we're placing the horizontal rebars, starting with the first row right on top of the spacers we welded earlier. After that, we're adding a new row every 30 centimeters up. Keep things quick and consistent, we're not measuring every gap. We made a 30 centimeter wooden spacer. We just sit the spacer on the last rebar and drop the next one in. No tape measure needed. But we're only building half the wall for now. That's because our formwork setup won't support a full height pour this time. All the horizontal rebars are in. Now we need to get the mesh plump. That three centimeter gap from the wall edge has to be right or it weakens the whole structure. To keep the mesh from shifting, we're welding diagonal rebars onto the pile rods. These braces lock it in place so it stays solid when the formwork goes up. No surprises later, just ready to build. Time to mark where the vertical rebars will go. We're spacing them 30 centimeters apart. That'll give us 30 by 30 mesh openings once everything's tied. To make it easy, we're using a correction pen. Shows up way better on the steel than a pencil or chalk. Welding the vertical bars now. Tag welding them to the bottom first. Then we use a spirit level to make sure each one is plumb before locking it in. That way, all the gaps stay the same and the mesh comes out clean and even. Just a quick tag onto the top and bottom horizontals to hold the vertical bars in place. We'll tie everything properly with wire rods afterward. This just locks the position so the bars don't move while we build the rest of the mesh. These vertical rebars are full wall height, even though we're only pouring half the wall for now. That means we won't need to weld them later, and it helps lock the second pour into the first, tying the whole wall together properly. All the mesh is in, spacers welded, and everything's locked in place. Time to start the formwork. First of all, we have to oil all the boards. Every surface that's gonna to touch concrete gets a coat. It stops the concrete from sticking, makes formwork removal easier, and helps us reuse the boards for future pours. Then we start setting up the formwork, placing boards right against the spacers we welded earlier. They mark the exact wall edge. No need for strings anymore. On the inside, we're using marine grade birch plywood for a smooth, clean concrete finish. Almost forgot these. Plastic caps for the ends of the rebar spacers. They help prevent corrosion and protect the formwork from getting damaged. Time to reinforce the formwork. First we check the drill bit. It has to be long enough to go through both sides. And we've got to be careful not to hit any rebar. One hit and the bit's gone. RIP drill bit. We're using threaded rods to tie the formwork together. Three layers total. One rod at the bottom, one in the middle, and one up top. Because once the concrete goes in, that pressure's no joke. Instead of using full height 120 centimeter boards on the outside, we're stacking two 60 centimeter boards. That makes it way easier to slide in the plastic spacer tubes from the inside, especially at the bottom. From the inside, we've got full height boards, since we only need access from one side anyway. Spacer tubes are cut to match the wall thickness, so concrete doesn't stick to the threaded rods. Makes it easy to take everything out once the wall's set and we're ready to strip the forms. For the outside of the formwork, we're using OSB. It's more than strong enough to hold the concrete pressure, and it's way cheaper than marine grade plywood. Since this side's gonna be completely buried under soil, we don't need a perfect concrete finish here. 
so there's no point wasting premium material where no one's going to see it. Here's how we built up the formwork structure. First, the boards go in. Then we lay 10 by 5 timber horizontally along the outside to support them against pressure. After that, we add 5 by 5 verticals running the full height of the formwork, like road spacers, locking everything in place. From the inside, we added 4 horizontal supports. Two at the very bottom, since that's where most of the pressure builds up when the concrete goes in, and two more spaced evenly up the height of the formwork. Simple setup, but it holds tight, and makes sure nothing moves when the pour starts. Now we're tightening up all the bolts, pulling the formwork together nice and firm. These hold everything in place once the pressure from the concrete hits. Last bolt tightened up. Everything's locked in, nothing left loose. Formwork's officially done. Every board, spacer, and support is in place. Solid and straight from top to bottom. We're ready for concrete. Before we start, we lubricate the concrete pump truck's tubes with a wet slurry mix. It coats the inside of the hose so the concrete flows smooth and doesn't clog. Once that's flushed through, we bring the hose straight to the formwork. No concrete wasted, no mess on the ground. Clean start, just how we want it. We're starting to pour from the bottom section of the front formwork. Since it's wider than the top, we pour this part first and give it some time to settle while we move around the rest of the wall. This way, by the time we come back, the lower section has already taken shape, firm enough to support the next layer. It also helps keep the whole pour clean and under control, especially where the form changes thickness. Layering it like this gives us way more control over how the wall sets up. And of course, we make sure to vibrate every section properly. No skipping here. Vibration pushes out the trapped air, packs the concrete tight, and makes sure it flows into every corner of the formwork. If you don't do it right, you'll end up with weak spots or honeycombing, but when it's done properly, you get a smooth, dense, and solid wall that'll hold up for decades. This first truck only brought three cubic meters, just enough to get us going. It's mainly here to pump the concrete in fast and keep things moving. We got about halfway through the formwork before it ran out. Next truck's already on the way with five more. They didn't take long. The backup showed up with the rest of the concrete. This second load brought the full five cubes we needed to finish the wall. Driver backed right up, pump hooked in, and we were pouring again in minutes. Good timing too. The first layer hadn't set yet, so we could keep pouring without worrying about a cold joint. Straight into the pour, no time wasted. We're pouring in layers, going around the formwork three times instead of trying to fill it all in one go. Doing it like this keeps the concrete lower and easier to control. It also makes vibration way easier. With a thinner layer, you can reach every corner and get all the air out without fighting the mix. Less pressure, better compaction, and a much cleaner result at the end. Pouring's complete, and the pump truck's out. There's going to be a second pour soon that'll finish the wall. That's why we're not leveling the top. Leaving it rough helps the next layer stick better. Smooth isn't always best. Right now we want maximum grip between the two layers. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss what's next. This basement's not your everyday build. We're going step by step, showing every stage, every challenge, and every detail. In the next parts, we'll reveal how the pour turned out and how the shape held up. The second part of the rebar mesh is going in, and this one's getting tricky. Formwork going up to three meters high. Big stones going in at the front, heavy, awkward. Formwork's going in for the concrete slab. Three different angles over the top of the basement. Nothing standard about this build. 